what my feet look like right now. These are socks that go all the way up here and they're very, very tight. Absolutely. This is going to be my intro. Let me just say, hey everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. I am Jen Jen Baby and I am getting a cosmetic procedure today. I am going to be doing a tummy tuck, a 360 liposuction and a bbl um and stay tuned to see my results and my recovery process bye this is what i look like from the front and i am about to go into surgery right now so let's pray and hope for the best and um let's pray and hope for the best Okay, everybody, welcome to my two months post-op video um, regarding my plastic surgery that I had done in TJ. When I first announced that I had gone plastic surgery, I was, I think, three weeks post-op, and um, a lot of people hit me up asking me all the basic questions that I had before looking into getting um, work done. So I am going to um, answer everybody's questions and I'm going to add a few things in there that um, I wish I would have known myself just because I feel like I had so many questions going in and there was a lot of things that I didn't even know were going to happen that I had to find out for myself. So we are gonna get into that. I don't want this to be a super long video. I just want to cut down to the chase and I will be showing you guys before and after pictures and videos of what it was that I look like and what I look like before. Um, so, okay, first things first. Um, I am 25 years old. I have had three births um i have given birth three times and um i had an epidural with my first um i went in mentally thinking that i could do it on my own and i tried so hard um to do it on my own but i i asked for it i couldn't handle the pain the second time going in i was already mentally prepared and uh, your mental state of mind has a lot to do with how you are going to recover from anything, okay? So just know that off the bat, if you're mentally strong and you have a goal set in mind, sorry, I'm holding this because I'm <laughs> right now in my little shop area. This is where um, my husband and I tattoo. This is where we have our little um, side hustle business where we do custom t-shirts and mugs and all that fun stuff. And we have a censored light on top. I have a ring light right in front of me and we have a sensor light on top every time you walk in see it just turned off so I'm trying to hold this so that I can put motion over here and I can um, okay whatever have the light turn on anyways um, so I went in the second time giving birth mentally prepared and I gave birth without an epidural raw completely I felt it all um, I gave birth a third time. I had my tubes tied. That was my first actual surgery. All my births were natural. Um, I had my tubes tied uh, six months after my son was born. And um, that wasn't as painful as people made me think it was going to be. Um, so just a heads up of what I had done before, how I handled it. Um, every surgery is different. Obviously this is way different than, um, getting your tubes tied or giving birth. I just have a lot of people ask me if it hurts more than having a baby or how, you know, but it's, it's completely different. 
um, the contractions that you're feeling when you're having a baby are the worst thing ever in my life that I have felt. Um, this to me was more discomfort than it was pain. Um, okay, what did I get done? I had an extended tummy tuck. I had 360 liposuction and I got a BBL. Um, so about tummy tucks, um, this is why you always have to look into um, who you're gonna go with and send uh, pictures or have a consultation because you might think you need one thing but they will recommend something else. I just wanted to get liposuction all over and have a BBL. That was my idea. There are four different types of tummy tucks that you can get. Didn't even know this myself. Um, the first one is a really small tummy tuck that uh, will basically just go underneath your belly button just to take care of that pouch area that a lot of us get when we have a baby, you know, you might be able to lose all the weight everywhere else, but right underneath your belly button, there's that little soft spot that you know it's really hard to get rid of so the first tummy tuck will take care of that it's the, the smallest tummy tuck um that you can get and from my understanding because i know i personally knew somebody that had this procedure done um they do not touch your natural belly button when you do that tummy tuck the smallest one that tummy tuck is just really tucking in just the very bottom underneath your belly button and your belly button your natural one stays the way that it is the other three different types of tummy tucks that there are they will remove the belly button that you have and make a new one um in case you didn't know that i i knew that already but in case you didn't know that um there's some more information um so then there's a regular tummy tuck which goes from one hip to the other and it's right underneath your stomach right there too and then there's the extended tummy tuck which is the one that i got and the cut goes um there's like this much space in the middle of my back that is not touched besides that it goes all around my back all the way through the front of my stomach right underneath on the bottom so my cut is from the back here all the way to the front to the other back it doesn't touch but there's like this much space before it fully touches um so i had an extended tummy tuck and then there's a circular tummy tuck which cuts you 360 all around like full on you have a full like cut that connects from one end to the other. I just wanted liposuction, like I said. I sent in um, pictures of what I look like and I was recommended to get an extended tummy tuck because my love handles on the side were too out, I guess. Um, and I would have had a lot of loose skin if I would have just gone with the liposuction. So I thought about it a lot because I never really wanted a tummy tuck. I really, really liked my belly button. Um, my husband loved my belly button, so I didn't want to touch it, but I ended up deciding to do it just because I knew it was going to give me the best results at the end in the long run. So I got an extended tummy tuck. They liposuctioned me underneath my arms, um, in three different places in my back, on the top, in the middle, and on the bottom. They liposuctioned me on the inside of my thighs. Um, <laughs> they liposuctioned like my pouch on top of like my vagina. Does that make sense? I didn't. I I didn't know they did that. So I'm telling. I'm just gonna say it because maybe it happens normally to everybody, but nobody talks about it so they like most well, should be there when i walked in um after i was in my robe and everything before they marked up my body the doctor came in and he's like okay i'm gonna liposuction you here and i was like oh okay <laughs> like that's mine i didn't i didn't know um maybe he was just trying to tell me something i needed it i don't know but that's what that's what happened to me you cannot get your stomach liposuctioned when you do a tummy tuck um, because the way that the tummy tuck is done is that they remove and burn off the top layer of your skin. They lift it up 
they cut on the inside um they kill some fat and then they sew the inside like your guts area they sew it up like a corset they pull it and it stitches in so it really like like um snatches you and then they put your skin back down and then they sew you so your skin was separated from your flesh and that is the reason why it is very 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 important that you are wearing your faha your garments all of that um after surgery because it's gonna make your skin stick back to your stomach I'm sorry for the back noises everybody's in the living room they cannot do liposuction um on your skin and your st abdominal area when you get a tummy tuck your skin could die and turn black because it's been separated from the rest of your flesh if you go with a doctor that tells you that they will be doing liposuction and your tummy tuck do not allow them to do it because as far as i'm knowledge um that will definitely cause your skin to die um so those are the procedures i had done and then the bbl all the fat that they took from me they put it in my butt i went to bella bodies which is located in tj for anybody that has not gone to tj before please go with somebody that kind of knows the area I go to Mexicali all the time. My husband, his family's from Mexicali. It's only four hours away from where I live right now. So we kind of go constantly and I'm very familiar. And as soon as you step in, you can tell you're in Mexico, it's different, but um, I'm pretty familiar already with Mexicali and I feel comfortable when we go to Mexicali. And this time we went to TJ and it's another world and it's crazier and the driving is more um, careless so just go with somebody that you know um, Bella Bodies did uh, recommend a hotel for whoever was coming my company to stay in um, a lot of their patients stay in that hotel so I was very comfortable there it was a very nice hotel um, I was like I said I was comfortable I didn't fear like for my life i don't know i had a lot of girls message me telling me if it was dangerous looking over there that they're scared to go um and to be honest we can be in the same amount of danger here going to target and having a weird guy like trying to follow us around danger is everywhere and just take somebody that is familiar with tj because they're gonna be more comfortable driving around there my experience with bella bodies was amazing i had the nicest staff i um got my consultation and set up my date and everything with uh d which is one of their consultants i'm going to put her instagram right here and bella body's instagram down here and i'm going to put their link in the bio so you guys can just click on it and she was very nice i sent her my pictures she always answered my questions every time that i had a question she was always there so i was really comfortable um with her and i had my my aftercare massages done with jackie and i'm gonna put her instagram down here as well and she's amazing she as soon as i asked her once if she would be available she right away called me we were on the phone for a really long time and she was like what are you gonna get send me pictures okay you need to make sure you're doing a b and c and don't forget to be taking these pills and you're gonna need this after and because of her i was able to know a lot of things that i was going to need after because i wasn't as prepared as i thought i was i thought i was prepared but she really like helped me Fully get through it she texts me every single day in the morning how I'm doing how I'm feeling if I have any questions and she's amazing I feel like I have like my backup with her because I don't feel alone she's just always there so she's great they gave me a medical pass to cross back through the border so I was only at the border um, at the like line to cross back for like 25 minutes I want to say and I might be exaggerating it would have been like way less I don't know I was out of surgery I wasn't really I just know I thought it was really fast I just have nothing but great things to say about my experience 
during, before, and after my procedure. Um, there was one nurse in particular, I, I forgot her name, but she was so funny and she was so nice and they helped me with everything. They kept checking up on me, they brought me food. Like, I have nothing bad to say um, about them. To me, I will not trust anybody else but them. It was, it was just, um, I was scared going in and they totally like relaxed me they reassured me i never once felt you know that gut feeling of i don't think i should be here i never felt that at all i felt completely comfortable the entire time i just kind of was waiting for it to be done so that i my my thing was like please let me wake up you know you hear stories um some people could die you know it just they they fully checked me i had a full physical um, they made sure that I was um, physically prepared to go under for surgery. So I, I'm sorry, I felt really, really comfortable and safe with them. I stayed overnight and I was let go. I think it was around 1130 in the morning the next day on Friday. And then I went home. I did have two tubes on the side of my hip. Um, I'll show like a picture of it. I don't want to like f do a full long picture because um, It's kind of scary, you know, like the way that I looked after I was completely Bruised up. I'm sure a lot of you if you've done your research You've seen that um, you get completely bruised up everywhere from them pumping right on the top layer of your skin to get all the fat you're completely bruised besides the fact that i had a cut going like almost all around me um i had the two tubes hanging out and um, they were connected to these two bags that held my blood for clogging and all of that Um, I had those on for 11 days. On the 11th day, they got removed. They're on the side of my hip, um, like I showed on the picture. And I thought they were just like barely hanging on the inside of my skin. And when she took it out, like the tubes, it was in me like this much. Like from one hip all the way to the other hip, it was, that's how long those tubes were. And I didn't even know, and I could just feel her like, pulling them out and I was like oh it didn't hurt it was just really like like uncomfortable okay price range so um it really depends what you're getting done I had an extended tummy tuck some people might need a circular which will cost more um some people will just want to get a tummy tuck and a lot of girls ask me for a ballpark number including my massages and everything so let me just let you guys know something real quick before surgery, um, you have to prep before, no matter what, or else you're really gonna have a hard time recovering or you might show up to your appointment date and they will send you home because your um, iron levels and all that are not where they need to be. So to prepare, to prepare for surgery, you must take certain vitamins. I took vitamin B pills, beet root pills, iron pills, um what was the other one it was white um blood circulation pills i was doing this for almost three months before my surgery i drank a lot of arnica tea and i was sober completely no drinking no smoking no nothing zip um i was completely sober and then you do your surgery I purchased an after surgery faha at the facility, which was an extra $100. I'm not supposed to take it off at all. I'm actually wearing a faha right now, also. Um, so I had that one on for the first 11 days which is when I was the most swollen, which is when I was the most uncomfortable. And that's when I had the drain that I had to carry everywhere. And then after the 11 days passed, uh, she took my drains out. And after that, I moved on to my stage two faja. That's what it's called. You have your first faja, then you have your stage two faja. And that is the one that I'm still wearing right now. 
um she altered it to make it into a stage three but let me tell you about that right now so i got my stage two faja in an extra small and i've never been an extra small nothing i've never even been in a small nothing i normally always shop and get a large now i got it altered to make it even smaller so it's the same faja but it's way smaller than what an extra small size is because on the inside, the inseam and everything, they sewed it up to really snatch it up and it's like tiny. Um, and when I take it off, my waist and everything stays exactly the same size. It does not expand. Like I, like that's what I, that's what I look like um with the faja on my waist measures at 29 inches and without it it measures at 29 inches even if i have it off for a long time um so fajas are very 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 important so then so you have your before vitamins you have your fajas you have your massages and then of course you have your surgery um ballpark just me estimating i'm going to say you're going to be putting in where i where i went ballpark maybe eight thousand dollars um this is again including massages and fajas and the surgery and the vitamins that you're going to need before um and the butt pillow that I purchased, yeah, I'm gonna say eight thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars ballpark, ballpark. Okay, just to give you guys an idea, uh, pain level. This is what everybody wants to wonder. I again will stress to you how important it is um, that you're mentally prepared because. If you're gonna go in thinking like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in pain, I'm gonna be in pain. You're gonna be in so much pain because I didn't even feel like pain like that. Um the second day after my surgery, I regretted it. I said I will never have plastic surgery again. I can't believe I did this. I I don't want it anymore. Like I I was regretting it. And the reason why I was regretting it is because they give me they gave me circulation pills um at the facility that is included with your price and everything it's part of it they gave me circulation pills that i had to take for seven days after surgery she did warn me before she let me leave um she warned me the nurse that it's gonna make me feel really dizzy and nasty so to try to take two a day but if i really really cannot do it to at least take one so I was like, okay, I got it. It's cool, you know. I'll, I'll handle it. And she was—it was no joke. She, I took the pill, and the way that I can describe it, and I'm—I'm I'm really gonna get into this description because if there's one thing that made me regret doing this is that fucking pill. I—I I don't regret it because like people are like oh you have to sleep this way and you gotta do this yeah it's annoying but if there's one thing that really like that one day that i was like why did i do this it was because of that pill so that pill made me feel like when you're really drunk to the point where you're like throwing up and everything is spinning and you're at that point where you like are like why did i drink so much but you you can't do anything about it because you're already that drunk that's how that pill made me feel and there was nothing i can do about it because i was already at that level i was already feeling like that i was already like so i cried i literally cried i i cried because i couldn't do anything about it and i couldn't believe that this was my situation and it just made it seem like it was gonna be such a long recovery process um but i quickly found out that it was because i was only two days out of surgery i barely had i had barely ate anything i had barely ate anything and um I was still really weak so to take that really strong pill it just messed me up but you have to take it so there's no you it's for your circulation you need that you have to take the pill so the next times i tried it um the next few days it still made me feel so horrible 
and then after like four days um when i was four days out i made sure i ate a lot as much as i could right before taking it and it wasn't as bad every day after that it was better but i was just waiting for the seventh day so that i can be done with the pill and after that it was i just don't feel like it was that bad it is one of those things where maybe in the moment you're like oh but right now that i'm two months out i like i'm, I'm so happy that i did it i feel really good about myself i have i feel like i have always have like self-esteem issues when it comes to my physique um not so much like my mentality or um how to explain it like i know that if i really want to do something i'll set my mind to it and i will do it and it's gonna happen so it's not like i don't think i'm not capable i'm fully capable of doing anything that i set my mind to but when it comes to like my physical i have my entire life i think always felt like just not comfortable and i right now have been shopping so much because clothes that i wouldn't even dare to even look at and it wasn't even an option in my head i never even was like oh i wish i could wear that no like i was just like okay that no like i i'm just now buying it all and i can't wait to wear it out and i just want to take all these pictures and my friend she was like why haven't you posted pictures and it's just like i don't know why i thought in my head like my life was going to be different after my surgery it's, i'm living my same life i'm a mom i'm a wife and i have a lot of stuff to do and it's really hard for me to be able to dress up to take a picture to post it on instagram um i'm trying to make more time but it's kind of hard you know i have a lot of stuff going on and with kids going to school online um that really limits me a lot again pain level i wasn't in so much pain i'm just gonna do a little recap i wasn't in so much pain um it hurts more to have contractions during birth and i just always get asked you know like was it more worse worse than giving birth people always compare everything to um giving birth like oh you're gonna get tatted well i mean you gave birth it's not the same everything is different i have tattoos i have one tattoo that i have not finished because i'm just i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna finish it just gonna maintain unfinished because it was so painful to me that i don't think i will ever get it finished i've been having it for two years and I think around six months ago, I let my husband try to finish it. And I was like, nope, never mind, not gonna happen. It just, I'm not gonna finish it. It just really hurts me. So everything is different, but I've given birth without an epidural. Everything is just different. Don't, don't base yourself on one, on one thing. I have really felt so comfortable with everybody that I have dealt with when it comes to them and I just have nothing but great things to say. I know there's a lot of places in TJ. Um, I just, I would not trust anybody else but them. This is my experience. This is how I feel. And um, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But I I would like to do a round two eventually, probably, maybe. Um, and if that's going to be the case, I don't have to search anywhere because that's where I'm going to be going. I was sleeping on a recliner. My, I was trying to sleep on the couch and my husband saw that I was struggling so he went out and bought me a recliner and it has a remote control that leans you back and everything. Um, a lot of pillows like do not let your butt touch a flat surface. Um, I purposely sat on flat surfaces for periods of time because I felt like my butt was too big. Um, I asked for something natural. I wanted it to be like, oh, she has a nice butt, but I didn't want it to be too out there. And I felt at some times that it was kind of big, although I should have waited because I was still swollen and healing. So I ended up though with the with exactly what it was that I asked for. I'm still really healing. Um, you're supposed to wear the faja for four to six months after surgery. I'm really two months out. So I still have like another four months to go where you wear it religiously, literally every day. Your skin has to stick back to your, on the inside 
it has to stick back to you know your flesh so do not not wear it you have to wear your faha you have to wear your faha you have to get massages after it's not even an option you have to do it a lot of people think that you just get your surgery and you're done no you need um your lymph lymphatic massages after which is when they're draining all your liquid out and all you're gonna be swollen and it's all like liquid that is just building up you have to get that drained out it's a must your body will like shrivel up i've seen pictures of girls that don't get massages after their surgery and their body looks horrible like like their skin it just like it tightened up and it like builds bumps sometimes you have to get massages after it's not just the surgery and don't go with anybody just because they're gonna give you a good deal make sure that you have financially the amount of money that you need to take care of yourself after because the surgery is literally 50 percent of what you're gonna look like after the other 50% is how you take care of your body after surgery and who you go with is going to make a difference on your final outcome. Um, you need to be with somebody that knows what they're doing. You need to go with somebody that's going to make sure that they're doing what's going to be right for you in the long run. Jackie totally pushed me. She's like, you're going to go into an extra small. And I was like, what? And she just, she helped me get into it. And it just, it's giving me the best results. And I just am so happy that I went with her. So that's very important. And I'm going to show you guys right now some before pictures of me. There's one picture that I really hate, but I'm going to show it because I did reach that weight at one point. That's the one that really like hits me when I see it. Like I can't believe that I, you know, I didn't take care of myself. I, I let myself go down that road. And I know you might think like people people might look at me and think like i cheated because instead of working out and trying to lose weight the natural way i won and like i got this done but i don't think working out would have given me the hips that i wanted to have and at the end of the day i really don't care like if anybody has anything bad to say no one has ever said it to my face so obviously you know i don't care i really don't care um and nobody should either if you really want to go get it done just go get it done my husband being like my biggest support through this was very important because i could not do anything for myself after surgery i tried so hard to quickly recover because i didn't want to just dump the load on him but for like the first four days he was like doing everything for me everything okay think about what everything is that's what he did he did everything and on top of that he had to cook clean and take care of the kids so if you are a mom or if you're not you need somebody that's going to help you during your healing process. You cannot do it on your own. You need somebody to help you and make sure that the person that is helping you isn't a low key hater because they're the ones that are going to like, you're gonna suffer through your recovery if you're dealing with somebody that's low key hating on you for having a surgery. Anybody has questions about anything, you can hit me up on Instagram and I will be 100% truthful um about what it is that you're asking i think that's it so let me show you guys um the before pictures right now All right, so this is what I look like. Um, they totally like took out my fat from the side here and right away I could notice like this. I didn't move my hair. 
like this right here area being like super small. Um, the main problem I say I would have right now is like my jeans do this. Like this part sticks out. And when it comes to my butt, this is what my butt looks like. Which is exactly like what I asked for. I didn't want it to be super like out there. I'm very happy with like what it looks like. And this is me from the back. Even like from the side, like this part is so tiny. I like was big and my gut would always stick out and now it's like so tiny. And then from the front, like I do look curvy. So this is me two months post-op. so that's my video for today um that's what i look like now versus what i look like before even like from this angle like i really really like how you can't see how they shaped my body i'm very very comfortable but yeah thank you guys for watching i really hope i answered everybody's questions i will see you guys next time and if you have any other questions list them down below because i am going to be doing a maybe a four month post-op video um on you know how i'm doing so far then because honestly every month is different and you look different and your body changes a lot um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you later.